この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りしますオーライディー、ウェルカムエブリワン。アイムティアブー、アイムヒュー、フォー、ジョジョズ・ビザー・アドベンチャー、パート5、エピソード23。ラストタイムオン・ジョジョズ、ウィガットゥ・ニュー・スタンド・ユーザー、ウォーキング・ズ・ティーム、アンデー・アタッキング、クラッシュ・アン・トーキング・ヘッド、ウォー・トーキング・ヘッド、ジュース・ワン、アイゲス。アンデー、ワンオブ・ダム・イズ・アッド・シャーク・ティング、ダッキン・テレポート・ベトゥ・ン・ウォーター、アンデー、ウィリフォーク・シェット・アップ。アンデー、ワン・イズ・アウィー・トング・アタッチング・ティング、ダッ。That makes people say what they don't mean. And Narancha has taken the brunt of, of both of their attacks and、uh, is currently unable to, to really help his team and tell them the truth. But Jorno is kind of figuring it out. So they, they, they're going to they're gonna win this fight. We'll see how. He can, he can, of course, replace Narancha's tongue and all that stuff, but he's got to figure out talking head. And then I don't know how they're going to defeat Crash, Clash, Clash. Clash, not, not crash, because it's, it's、uh, nipponicized as kurashu, so that's weird. Anyway,、um, gotta defeat Clash, because that's the main attacking power stand thing, and Talking Heads is kind of, or Talking Head is kind of a support stand thing. And、uh, we met their users kind of briefly. They're, they're pretty cool, got some poses. Anyway, I assume we're going to finish up this fight in this episode and then move on from there. But、uh, I don't know. Let's find out. I've got it up. It's at zero seconds. You can find multiple versions of this video. You can find picture in picture versions with the video up there in the description down there and a timer based version with any run throughs, frame by frames, discussion, whatever on YouTube as usual. A、uh, timer based version will have a beep beep timer. It'll go boop 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 beep, and on the beep in the green light, that's the same frame that JoJo starts playing on my screen. So if you're playing along, that's probably when you want to hit the button. Beep beep timer goes here. Mm, not yet, but Jordan is getting close. Sucks. Kick, kick, kick. Yes. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Oh, right. I forgot about that. I completely forgot about that. That was our ending cliffhanger. Yeah, where is he getting pulled to? Oh, wait, it can take anything in its mouth, right? It can teleport anything. Yep. Shit. Good plan. I have a feeling it won't go as.、Uh... I have a feeling it won't Keikaku Dori. <laughs> yes, you should. Super gay. Can't have that. All right. Let's see if this grows on me. I've listened to it a couple of times, and it is definitely growing on me.
it's definitely growing on me. I want to make a note to talk about it at the end. Crap a moly. Crap. This is T, by the way. If. Ditsu. Shot Jorno. Oh. He can still teleport. Oh, to to cut off his airflow. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You telling me that that Narancha made a big brain play? Narancha made the 200 IQ play? What? Huh. So how was he able to say that out loud? Got him. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Naranj is having a life or death battle right now and they're just like hmm I wonder Hmm. Oh, geez. Extremely. Ah, so there's a limitation on how far it can jump.
It's figuring out how to track ya. Huh? Ah, uh, crap. Crap. For fear of causing an explosion. Crap. <laughs> That's great. I was wondering what he was going to do, and that works. All right. All right, Jorno. Time to heal yourself. Yeah, why? Why? Is it in, is it in Jorno now? What? No, 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 the gas, yeah. Huh? He wants him to shoot? Okay. Or was that talking head forcing him to say, shoot? Oh. Oh. What did he do to the brooch before he he dropped it? Oh, god damn it. Yep. It's much worse if it's selective, if it's not everything he says. Go after the user. So you can probably find them as, as carbon dioxide. All right, let's do it, Narancha. The Rancho on a mission. Cool. Definitely labored breathing. Hello.
He's not trying to track it. He's trying to track you. Yeah, buddy. Can you stop breathing? Squalor. But how many of them are panting? Then you're screwed. Yeah, totally inconspicuous. You want to bet? She's just trying to... Oh. Oh. Oh, nope. He cut off. Holy shit, Narancia. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. That's what he did with the brooch. Okay. Okay. The multiplayer big brain plays. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Although, I guess... I guess anybody who saw you cut off your own tongue in the middle of a crowded square would probably freak out a little bit. But hey, it works. Indeed. Indeed. Scrado. Crap. Tits! Well, those are some squelching noises right there. Oh shit, Tiziano! What a homie! No, they didn't. Mm. 
fuck. Kind of reminiscent of the scene holding Mista. Oh, shit. I just want to kill you. Yep. Ah, uh, huh? Oh! Plus 25 respect points to Narancha. Vroom. Sick. Oh, hey, buddy. Can I get a new throat, please? Is he not breathing? Oh, he's breathing. Notorious Chase.
Okay. All right. No clue what that means, but cool. I guess maybe maybe it's a reference to the next stand user or something. I don't know. So, this episode. I really like this episode. Uh and and not just from a story perspective, I feel like the production on this episode in particular was a bit more stable, if that makes sense, than some of the previous ones. Uh some previous episodes have felt kind of janky and uh a little bit like it was rushed. Like maybe some of the scenes weren't uh checked over as well as they could have been or weren't exactly what the the artists were hoping to put out. This one felt like everything came together and and it went as planned, if that makes sense. Like the pacing of the story was good, the the direction was good, the 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 animation was relatively good. Everything felt like it came into like it fell into place in this episode. And that's really nice. That's it's really good. Um, I hope that, that that trend continues and that we see things working out as they should in the future uh, because DP has been, has been kind of up and down over the course of JoJo's and this seems like we're heading up, um, to me at least. I, I don't know. It, it didn't have many like super standout moments in terms of animation quality, but it was all solid and it, was all, it all looks pretty good. Um, there wasn't anything that bugged me. I think they really sold the dynamic between uh, Tiziano and and fuck, I forgot his name now. Straight up, just forgot his name. Between the two of them, um, I think they really sold their their weird, kind of pretty gay thing that they've got going on as teammates. Um, certainly in in these scenes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I wanted to talk about the OP. For for two reasons. First, I want to talk about the song, and then I want to talk about one specific animation cut, which somebody else uh, brought up in my Discord and uh, and pointed out. And it was just something that I hadn't hadn't taken a closer close enough look at. And so I, I want to I want to shout them out for doing that. It was uh, it was Rocket Science, I believe, who who mentioned it. But first, let's let's talk about the song. So the song is is pretty different from most other JoJo OPs. A lot of the time they go for bombastic and like hype. This song is not that. It's got it's got a nice beat to it and and it's pretty cool as a song, but it's more reserved and it's kind of a a a, a new sort of style for a JoJo's OP and it's definitely growing on me. It's it's definitely got something to it that that works. So I just wanted to mention that and say cuz last time I was like I don't know, maybe this will people grow on me, but I, I don't love it. I'm starting to really like it um, more than I expected to. So that's cool. It's good to good to listen to things a couple of times and, and get a handle on them. And then the, the thing that I wanted to talk about animation wise was um, this scene of the arrow spinning. And again, appreciation. Thank you to Rocket Science for, for pointing this out. But this isn't CG. This is really smooth and it's it's frame frame by frame of this of this arrow spinning and it's really really pretty like credit where credit is due that one scene of the arrow is really attractive and and super smooth and kind of kind of stunning like it's uh it seems like a really simple cut but it is not that is a complicated object to rotate through space without without assistance without computer tools um of course they could have used a, a cg model and then drawn over it or drawn with it as a reference but it, it doesn't matter they still had to draw it and it's it's really good and there's there's a lot of other little little bits of, of really nice animation uh in this op but that one is a real standout same thing with with all of this um i mean i don't even know what it is it's sand or dust or smoke or something but that's that's all it's all keyframe work and it's really attractive this is all also animated by hand and it's really attractive
And then this as well. Much, much faster pace. But it still flows really smoothly. It's super cool. Anyway, as for the episode itself, um, it's a pretty cool one. We got to see the dynamic between the two users. Uh, we got some some crazy plays out of Narancia, which is awesome because he's sort of the he's the goofball, right? He's the kind of the dumb guy, but uh, you know he's he's good at this. And we talked about this during the the little feet fight. He's he's good at this, and he's good at reading opponents and figuring out. How to how to deal with them, and you know, Jorno pulls a thing with the brooch brooch thing and makes him a tongue, which is pretty great. Uh, but it's really Narancia carrying this fight. I I like the dynamic between these two, not just the the way they treat each other but the way they they function as a team um it's it's kind of nice it's kind of kind of cool we haven't seen a lot of a lot of team stands from the opposition i guess you could say that prosciutto and uh and pesci work together as a team but they had a very distinct mentor student type relationship um or like big bro little bro type relationship these two are kind of on equal footing and uh just like working together and and it's kind of it's kind of cute they re they really went all out on uh making Narancia's run here interesting <laughs> with his arms flailing in the back it's kind of cool and this is a pretty inventive fight with uh, a stand that can teleport between water and take anything in its mouth, he can just teleport his opponent into bodies of water of any size. Like we saw, we saw Jorno's head just appear in a, a small bottle of water. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy, wacky, and and really creative, and fun. And then we get the uh, the sort of standoff in the kitchen with the the gas, so he can't shoot. Mista comes. Oh, and then the 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 propeller moment was was fantastic. If I can't shoot. Fuck you. I've got a propeller. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. I love it. He does it again later. Yeah. So Mista ends up shooting. He's not happy about that. Jorno gives him the, the final thing. He's like, go for the enemy. And gives him a tongue. Then we get this, this standoff in the place. All over labored breathing. And then I, I kind of really like the way that uh, 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 the blonde one, <laughs> shit, the way that the blonde one goes out by uh, sacrificing himself to spread blood around so that Clash has, uh, has liquids to jump to. Pretty cool. Um, I, I do have a minor gripe with this portion of the episode in that like they are in, in public and nobody around them notices anything untoward or weird going on like this guy he just he just cut out his own tongue and nobody notices except for the people who he's tracking okay okay but you have to imagine that if anybody saw him cut out his own tongue in the middle of a crowded square their breathing might change a little bit just just, just a tiny bit but the logic works it's it's fine So uh, we get this this sort of sacrifice thing by Tiziano. Uh, I really like this this frame with the sort of distorted everything. The real close up on his eye sells his his righteous fury, his vengeful rage. And also, this scene is reminiscent of the one where where Giorno in front of uh, in front of the canal was holding Mista after the. Um, um, the White Album fight. And then, uh, it's always fantastic when, when somebody eats an attack and just, like, no response. 
Mm, yeah, this thing's burying into my neck. Fuck you. I'm going to destroy you. I love it. Big respect points for Narancha. Jordan was all right. Everybody's good. We're back on the boat and off we go. Cool episode. Uh, I think it was a, a pretty great fight. I can't wait to read it in the manga reading, which I will do right after this. And we should be we should be back to normal. My internet has been fine today. So should be back to normal on manga readings going live. And that'll be right after this premiere finishes. So cool. Okay, well, I, that's pretty much all I wanted to say about this episode. Uh, I, I really liked it. I thought this was a good one, and I hope we get more in this vein. Yeah. So, we can wrap it up. I've been Tiabu. This has been JoJo's episode 23. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and I hope to catch you next week in the next one. Peace. <laughs>